on a Cisco ASA and a Cisco PIX, when we have site-to-site uh, -site tunnels set up, and sometimes we have multiple subnets on either end of those tunnels, we need to set up routing a certain way to, in order to communicate with those tunnels on both sides. So if we do a show run, uh, we'll take a look here, and we'll, we see two accesses that have already been created that have to do with this site-to-site -site tunnel. The first one, the NoNet, is the access list that's been created that we put in our crypto commands. And that basically says, do not do any natting between the two subnets. Don't hide any of the IP addresses. That allows those IP addresses to go back and forth, uh, just like two routers would allow it without any kind of natting. The second one is for the NAT command. And you again, that does the same thing, but just does it a different way. It says, don't NAT anything between these two subnets in the site-to-site -site tunnel. Now, the first part of the first subnet is going to be our internal address on our side. The 192.168 is the internal address on the other side of the tunnel. So on the other uh, Cisco ASA or PICs, you're going to reverse these rules. It'll start with the 192 and it'll end with the 10.0 network. So what we're going to do now is say on the uh, 10.000 network, we're going to say that there's also a 10.0.1 network. and we can already communicate with it, no problem. But by default, the Cisco's ASA and PIXs, they don't allow the 192.168.0.0 subnet to communicate with any other subnet but the one that's listed in this access list. So first thing we're going to want to do is create a route to the 10.0.1.0 network for our own internal routing. And then we're going to create an access list that allows us to communicate 192.168.0 to the new 10.0.1 network, which is our second subnet. So if we go ahead and finish out the show run, we're already in the configuration terminal. So first thing we're going to do is to route inside 10.0.1.0, and then we'll put in our subnet mask. 24 bit, and then we know the router connected to the 10.0.1.0 network has 10.0.0.2 on it. So it'll route this whole subnet to this IP, and then that router at, on 10.0.0.2 will take you take us to the other network. The inside interface must be specified uh, because by default it's going to route outside. All right, so the next thing we're going to want to do is set up the access list to allow the 192.168.0.0 network through. So first thing we do is an access-list no-nat, and it can be called anything you want, but it has to be tied back to the crypto. And we're going to permit IP 10.0.1.0. One nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot zero, and we do the same thing again. With the one hundred access list which we have, so let's do another show run, and we will take a look at our access lists. and we can see now that not only are we allowing the ten zero zero network in to 192.168, but we're also allowing the 10.0.1 network to the 192.168. So that subnet can reach both of our internal subnets.